I can't say so at all. So. (laughs) (laughs) You dick. All right, I won't say so. I don't think I can do it. It's like a swear jar. It's a jar. It's a so jar. (laughs) We got a so jar. (laughs) Sony. Do a quick intro. Let me think about this. Quick intro. We're gonna talk about our super receipt brackets because they're going into production, but we're gonna give you some details real quick on these. Check it out. Follow along. Number one, why super receipts? It's a big question, right? Well, super receipts do a lot of things that normal OBS seats don't. Power, they have heat, they have a little bit better cup holder, maybe. Uh I really want them for the cowboy truck because we the seats were shit in these things. And so, uh, yeah, that's number one. Number two, fitment. We have found that the Super U seat is extremely tall, way taller than an OBS seat. And it wasn't going to fit in there properly. For a short guy like me, I wasn't going to touch the pedals all the way. For a tall guy like Kenny, his head was going to be, that big old dome of his was going to be in that, that ceiling of the truck. Number three, that'd be safety. We didn't think it was really smart to drill holes through the pan of our OBS floor where there's no like structural integrity or anything like that. So that was a big one for us. The other one is when we tried to do that, we like sat them there to like mock it up. The seat sat like really high in the front and really low in the back. It was really derpy. Didn't think that was right. Reason we did this. Uh, reason we did this was when we got the cowboy truck, it had a set of uh, 40 20 40s they were disgusting looked like some homeless guy lived on them uh we thought well i'll just go get them reupholstered and it's like well wait a minute let's everyone's doing all the cool kids are doing super receipts and then uh we looked into that and so what i found i said so kidding is that super receipts are awesome because we did the 03 to 06 range uh, 03 no, to like 07 yeah 07 is a gray area but we'll, we'll follow up on that in a minute no airbags in them, which I love. They have heat. They have power. Awesome. And you can get all the upholstery from them, from like a lot of the big name brands sent to your door, foams as well. Uh, but that was the big one for this truck and why we did what we did. It wasn't because I was going after a market. The first hurdle was getting our seats as low as possible. Uh, how we did that? Well, Kenny, are you a cutter, Kenny, or are you a basher? What are you? Because that's the question you're going to have to ask yourself. With this kit, we give you a truss for the front, the back, the rear seats, but you have to get that truss as low to the floor as possible. And how we did that is we actually had to pocket this part of the floor, which on our test cab, I just took a dead blow hammer and I gave it some love. But then I didn't like that. It did the job, but I thought it was kind of derpy. So then we came up with this little pocketed guy that comes in the kit. So you just make a little rectangle cut out your floor install that guy, rivet it in, seam sealer, there you go. What that does is allow the truss for the passenger side seat to get as low as possible to match the driver's side seat. And the rear was pretty easy. It was already as low as it can be. This was our biggest hurdle. Let us discuss about the trusses. I'm going to reiterate one more thing. Other than taking the rivets off that hold the legs on your factory super easy uh, brackets. This is the only surgery pocketing this in your truck that you will have to do unless you want to bang it down with a hammer to clear it. Just want to let everyone know that is it. There's no welding or anything like that when it comes to the brackets and the seats. Okay, what was I saying? Oh, the truss assemblies. Front and rear, back, right over. This is a big deal right here. And the reason this was a big deal is because we had to make it fit the pan and also get as low, like I've talked about multiple times, plus be structurally sound on the ends, in the middle, uh, on that end. Because what happens is if you just lay a piece of steel across there and you put lay, you know, you put your seats to it, then it's going to flex and it's going to move around and you're going to feel it in your seat. So we did a truss across the truss. Yeah, that makes sense. And we tied it in, it's keyed, it's all lasered out. And then what we did is on the ends, 
we cornered the ends a little bit. That way it held it as a, it boxed it in and kind of held it so it wouldn't flex on the ends. We found that when we just did a piece of steel out there, even if it was laser or whatever, it would still flex a ton. So we kind of had to like box that in. It is quarter inch steel. Like I said before, it's lasered. This is not welded, it's formed. So it's formed over that hump. And if you look, can you get over here? If you look, this is why we had to to notch that floor or some people want to just smash it down with a hammer you can do that like i said but the truss needs to get as low as possible um, by doing this allows the passenger side seat to match the driver's side seat so they're equal uh, on the rear the same thing uh nothing extravagant we just put a tr uh, we just took and we actually lasered out several pieces there to then make a truss on the back side so it doesn't flex at all as well the rear brackets not as sexy as the front brackets. They get the job done. There's not anything rocket science, but what is really cool is that we made these work with our seats, which are a 60-40 combo, which has the one side, you know, they flip up and has the tray assembly. So we made this bracket kit work with that. So we're kind of pretty stoked because we want to haul you know, a couple dogs if we have to put the you know flip the seats up and you put the tray system down and all fit in this area we did have to make them so they would uh sit properly not too low in the front not too high in the back the headrest was just at that back spot kind of something it was like easy but yet complicated all right so we talked about the foundation of the seat brackets now i want to show you the legs and what you have to do to get the legs on there. Uh, this is obviously our base of our uh, super rear seats. We clean them up, kind of went through all the motors. This is why we will not use, why we don't suggest use a uh, manual seat because the manuals don't get as low as the power seats. If you look, these are all new legs. And so what you have to do is you pull the seat the tracks apart, you grind off the factory rivets that hold the, le the factory legs on and then you install our legs. Um, you can see how low they are. Not much, not too far off the actual track assembly. It's on both sides. Same thing as center console. That'd probably get me banned. What's this bracket do? This bracket holds our center console. These seats that we used were a 40-20-40. We like that style. The reason being is that uh, I like to flip down center console. You can flip it up if you want your Corgi to ride with you or maybe just, you know, someone to go skiing. Um, that'll probably get me banned off of Instagram. These guys just bolt right there in the factory location. The flip down center console bolts right to here. Uh, there's plenty of room. If someone says, hey, I don't want that, I want, like, this center console that lays flat or sits flat or however you want to talk about it. There's plenty of room for someone to make modifications to make that happen. I'll leave that up to you guys. We went with this route. That's the seats I wanted, and that's what we got. So you can see here, it just bolts to these studs. I can't see what the hell I'm doing. Kenny's in my way. That took forever. Bolt it down. You can see, or set down, you can see how low the actual base is with the floor, with the actual truss assembly. One kind of note here, seat belts. So this kit will allow you to run the factory seat belts or you can use the super U seat belts of your choice or of your choosing. Uh, that's an interesting one. Now the reason we like those seats from the 03 to 05, 6-ish, 7-ish years, kind of gets blurry in there after that, is that the controls, all of them, were on the seat itself. So all you need is a power on the ground. Now if we think about using our lumbar circuit we're going to see if that will carry the load. We're not quite sure if that will do the job. A little bit more on that later. But the later seats, especially in the aluminum duties, people have asked us about, the controls are not on the seats. They're actually in the dash, which gets really tricky, especially body control modules and stuff like that. That's why we dig that setup. That's it. That's all I got on this. I'm out. I'm going home. I'm later. Woo! I'm going home. Going home, Kenny. You can suck it, Kenny. I'm going Yeah. Okay, Kenny's right. Uh, next video, we'll have the seats sitting on the actual track assemblies. We didn't do that because they're up there on the mezzanine all wrapped up. Um, we had some leather work done on them. Uh, yeah, so if you like what you saw today and you guys are interested, uh, we'll have this uh, in the description uh, on this video, the link obviously to our store purchasing them. Check it out. Thanks so much.
Thanks so much for following along. Appreciate it. Now I'm going home, Kenny. Suck it.